everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you an astrological design that is all about moon phases. And the very actual nail is going to be a really pretty galaxy. And they're so much fun to sculpt and to create because there's really no set in stone rules about what to do with the galaxy. You just get to pick out some pretty sparkly rich colors, add some stars, and swirl them around a little bit. And you can kind of play around with it and have fun with it. And then I have the moon phases and I have two crescent moons facing in each direction and then the very center is a sphere and half black, half moon colored and you can turn it to create the different phases as you would like to. So that's so much fun and it was inspired by this necklace that I am wearing that is from Ana Luisa and it's so beautiful. It's got some cubic zirconia, little, little crystals going along for a moon and then one for a star and otherwise it is gold and it is just so beautiful, so lightweight and I have a couple other pieces from them that I will be showing you momentarily in the video and I just want to say really quickly that if you watch my channel you know that I'm always in support of brands that are vegan or earth savvy really in any way and that is definitely the case with them. They use recycled materials whenever possible and they are carbon neutral which is so incredibly uh, impressive in this day and age to be able to have that accolade. So I hope you check them out. I will have a link and a discount code in the description box below. So go take a peek at that and see what else they have. Everything is very minimalistic and very, very elegant and beautiful and very reasonably priced too if I might add. So yeah, I would give that a check and I will see you guys next time. Bye! So here are the three pieces that I got from Ana Luisa and they come in these adorable little pouches which I love so much more than a box because they're um, they're actually useful than just a jewelry box. I never keep my jewelry in the boxes. I have a storage cabinet so it's nice to have a little pouch that I could potentially use for something else. So they come like this. This one is actually my favorite one. As soon as I saw this one on their website I just fell in love with it. It's the cutest little circle and it's just it's so simple and so delicate. It just I, I really like that one. But then the next one I'm going to show you is just this it's again really small really simple I have a very sensitive neck and I don't like the feeling of anything heavy or bulky or itchy on me so the fact that these are so little and so delicate means that I will actually wear them which you guys probably have seen me wear crazy earrings in my videos in the past but never really much for necklaces and I'm happy because I can actually feel comfortable wearing these and then here's the one that inspired this whole video this is a moon and it's just a super shiny gold a circle with that little cubic zirconia moon and then the little star it is just so cute and as soon as I saw it I, I immediately thought hey you know what this could certainly be a crazy nail so here we go working on the aforementioned crazy nail so I'm going to begin by fitting the form to the nail and I'm using my practice finger for this so I'm going to fit it onto my practice finger and then I'm just going to pinch I always say that first. I'm going to first open the sides of my form and then we're going to pinch it down to the length that we want. So for this one, the actual nail isn't going to be super long, so I'm going to pinch it down to approximately the five mark. And then I'm going to take some clear acrylic and I'm going to blend the nail down into the form just to create a smooth base so that when I go and I start adding my color acrylics, it doesn't have that that like lip that you're working with but before you go from this particular step you're going to grab a piece of long wire and you're going to press it into the wet acrylic now if your acrylic set too quickly as mine basically did then you may not have wet acrylic to press it into in which case you're going to add a little bit more of the clear acrylic to get that piece of wire to stay and there really isn't anything for the wire to be balancing on. It's not like the nail form backing will just hold it there so you do have to kind of sit there and hold it while the acrylic is setting which can be relatively tedious so just you know take your time if you're wearing a glove you can put your finger right on top of it the acrylic won't stick to your glove and you don't have to worry so much about contamination onto your skin so then blend the wire so that there's not a huge lip from the wire either and then you're going to take an a glittery black and a glittery blue acrylic i did two tone beads so i went into the blue and then to the black for each one of these you're going to apply a very subtle little swirly mix you don't have to overly blend them together the colors you know if you have a really nice rich dark blue They'll be very close together just to start with between the black and the blue so you don't have to worry about swirling them in fact if you over blend them too much you won't even be able to notice that there's more than one color so just very gently kind of pat them together and then after you have that first dark background color you're going to take some swirls of aqua purple and pink and the great thing with sculpting a galaxy is you don't have to just stick with these colors that i am describing to you you can you know switch it up do whatever kind of colors you'd like instead um, there's just so many different combinations i've seen a lot of galaxies that have been done on nail art that aren't quite as bright as mine the colors are a little bit more pastel and subdued for the swirls i personally like the bright and crazy so i decided to go with it 
once I have that done, I'm going to grab some AB crystal stars. They're not actually crystals, they're just uh, glitters, but they have that AB crystal look to them. I'm going to press a few of those into the background, not overdoing it, and then encapsulate the entire nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that it is nice and strong and isn't going to be going anywhere. You want everything to be secure and uh, smooth when you're all finished with this. And if you are doing this as part of a set, this this nail on its own is so pretty. As soon as I got done with this one, I redid my mom's nails. She was due for her fill. And I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to bother asking you what you want in your nails today because I'm feeling like sculpting another galaxy. And that is what we did. But we're going to go through and we're going to uh, just file this into shape. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Be careful not to kind of damage your wire. You want to make sure that that wire keeps as much integrity as it can. Then apply a layer of gel sealer over the entire nail. All that galaxy glitteriness is going to shine so bright and cure it. So now inside a dome mold, we're going to be sculpting a half circle of white. When it's fully cured, you can pop it out. And if you want to see how I made this dome mold as I did make it myself, I can put a link to a video in the description box below that as well as a whole bunch of other stuff, we'll show you how I made the mold. Then you can pop that half circle out, set that to the side and repeat the process with black acrylic. When you're doing these and you're filling in this mold, try to do it in a section at a time and not try to just do one big bead and be careful because it's very easy to gunk up your brush since you have to just kind of use the tip of your brush and it's not as, uh, I don't know, it's not quite as easy to work with because you're working inside the mold. So just use little bits at a time and just be conscientious of what you're doing to your brush at the at the time then file the ends of those of those little half spheres to make sure that they aren't any bigger than they need to be and when they fit together they do form a circle and not an oval then using an under the nail cleaner bit you're going to create a groove on the north and south poles of one of the sides do the black side and then mark where those holes are by holding the white half circle next to it so that you get little grooves on the exact same spots on the white circle glue a bead into one of the grooves it can be the black or the white doesn't matter at this point just glue a bead into one of the grooves hold it there make sure you don't end up with too much glue where it fills in the hole of your bead because then your wire will not go through it so do it a little bead on each side and really if you wanted to you could get away with just doing one bead especially if the hole in your bead is relatively small and isn't going to it's going to be snug on your wire because then it'll be close enough it's not going to go anywhere when you start to spin it the problem with not having a bead in there is that the holes are relatively large and your your moon will just spin too freely so then after you have that done, I secured them to the black side with a little bit of clear acrylic, glued the white on top of the black, and then I'm going to take more clear acrylic and I'm going to blend the transition from one side to the other with that clear acrylic, just going around in a circle and making sure that it's fully attached all the way around. After you do this, if you find that your moon is, you know, there's like a spot that needs to be filed, you can go through the hand file or even a buffer block would suffice and just smooth it out if you need to. You may not, you might. It kind of depends on on how your sculpting went when you're attaching one side to the other. For me, I didn't really feel it was too necessary, but as the perfectionist I am, I did go through with the buffer block and just smooth it out just to be extra meticulous. So once you have all of that all finished off, you can set your little sphere to the side, and now we're going to draw a template for the rest of our crescent moons. So draw a circle to the best of your ability. If you want it to be absolutely perfect, circle you can trace something but it isn't really that necessary and then draw the little curves within that circle for the different sizes of your crescents and now lay a nail form backing over the drawing and sculpt each one so you're going to have a total of four crescents you're going to have two narrow and two wide and they're going to face opposite directions so you're going to have a left narrow and a right narrow a left wide and a right wide hopefully that makes sense you'll see what i mean in a second so here's the first narrow one and don't make them too thin where they're going to be super delicate you want them to be really thin and, and delicate looking without being delicate in practice. You want them to be stable enough that they aren't going to just break like a potato chip. So here's the second one, just sort of pressing it in. When you're working on a nail form backing, you may find that your acrylic spreads more easily than on a nail especially anything that has a matte surface to it. So one thing I like to do is I like to pull the liquid out of the back of my brush. So I'll dip my brush into my monomer, I'll grab my bead of acrylic, and then I'll flip my brush over the top onto a clean spot on my paper towel, and I'll just press it very gently, just a little bit. You'll kind of get the hang of it when you do this, but you're just going to drain the liquid out of your bead. So then when you set it on your nail form backing, it doesn't do that little whooshy spread thing where it just kind of goes uncontrolled out into this huge puddle. It kind of holds a little bit more of its shape. 
you'll kind of have to play around with it to see exactly how much you need to drain out of your acrylic when you're working with it because different brands will work a little differently. So now bending some more of my wire into little circles, I just wrapped it around a marker and then cutting off the extra, you need two little circles of wire. So I'm going to attach the first wire circle right underneath where the tip of my nail is on top of that wire that is embedded in the nail, securing that with a little bit of clear acrylic. One thing to keep in mind is I don't really recommend using nail glue to do this at really at all. Nail glue does not like to stick to wire. It kind of laughs at it a lot of times really. So doing something like this, just skip straight to your clear acrylic and attach it that way. So now I'm going to take my e-file and gently just buff a spot where I'm going to attach my first crescent moon that's on the nail so that it's not attached directly to that top, that top coat because the nail glue also will not stick to gel top coat. And then glue your crescent moon down onto the nail and then you'll see where it kind of attaches to the wire and you're going to take clear acrylic and secure that moon to the wire. Once you have that one all, all glued down, then you can grab the next thickest one. So you're going to do the thinner crescent first and then the wider crescent, and you're going to attach it right below the first one. So you're trying to get it where the circle kind of goes between the two moons, the two moon sizes, so that it almost looks like it's a circle. It's, like, it's sort of holding them together per se. It really isn't. It's not adding all of that much strength and structure to this design. It's really just for aesthetic purposes, but you want it to be kind of halfway between each of the moons. Once you have those and they're nicely secured, you're going to string your sphere onto the nail and it may take a little bit of effort to get the wire to go between the two beads. So just have patience with yourself if they don't seem to want to go through immediately. Then you're going to take your other circle and you're going to attach it to the tip of your wire. Depending on how long your wire is, you may have to cut some off. I actually thought mine was miraculously about the length I wanted, so I didn't take anything off and I was glad it wasn't any shorter either. But we're going to attach our second circle to the end of the wire, making sure that there's enough clear acrylic on there to hold it together, but not too much where it looks like it is got gunk on it, if you will. Once that's on there, get your moon just about as close up to the previous crescent as you can without you know, affecting how it spins. And then you're going to attach your other two crescents. So we're going to start with the thicker one, place that down, attach it to your wires. You want to, again, just use clear acrylic, skip over the nail glue because it won't stick to the wire very well anyways. And then you're going to attach your thinnest one. The thinnest one will come out past the end of that wire. And you want that because you don't want the wire to look like it's, I don't know, in the way past it. You want it to stop right about where it meets with that thinner one. So right at the end of that loop is where you want that wire to stop. You don't want to really go any further than that, but you are going to need to add some clear acrylic to the back of that tip of the moon because you don't want it to get too thin and delicate. And that one especially is going to be the most vulnerable to damage. Once you're done and you've secured all of your moons together with plenty of clear acrylic and you're happy with your process, you can take some black, white, and gray acrylic paint and add a little bit of sponging to your moons to give them that moon-like texture. If you really want to go crazy with it and be super specific, you can look at some moon reference photos and get a decent representation of the exact placement of some of the texture on the moon, or you can just sort of wing it like I did. I started out with gray, then I added a little bit of black, and then I went through and I mixed some of my gray and black together to get a slightly darker shaded gray and just kind of kept blending it. You don't want it to look too too sponged and too crazy. You want it to be a little bit subtle. I don't know how to explain it because there's like a, a certain a certain balance between too much sponging and too much drama to oh yeah that actually looks like moon texture. So just kind of work it in. You'll figure it out. Then apply a layer of gel top coat to all of your moons. When you are top coating your sphere you want to make sure that you don't get top coat on the wire anywhere or something where it touches one of the other moons around it so that it makes it so it won't move. You want to make sure that your moon still has that free movement so that you can turn it and get exactly what phase of the moon you want to be visible which is so cool. So it's, it's just so, it, I don't know, you can personalize it. You can turn things. It's, I love this nail. It's so astrological. And so it kind of, even though it's huge and it's a crazy nail, it still kind of has that delicate quality that I feel like the necklace that inspired it has with all the little wire, wire rings and everything. It still has that kind of simple and delicate feeling to me, maybe not to anybody else, but at least to me. After we have all of our top coating done, I put little dabs of some jewelry gel on my wire spacing as evenly as I can. And then I've got more of my star glitters. This time, instead of doing the AB silver, I did different colors and they still have that really shiny AB look to them, but I have pink, purple, blue, and black glitters, little star glitters that I'm going to be using. And then some little AB crystals that I am going to put between them. So it's going to go star, crystal, star, crystal, 
etc. Once I have one ring done, I'm going to flash cure it with my little flash cure flashlight to make sure that that wire or the wire, um, not the wire, make sure that those crystals aren't going to go anywhere while I repeat the process for the second ring. So repeat with a little bit of jewelry gel. It doesn't take much. Just a tiny dab will hold these pieces in place. Nothing about this is super strong where you, I would recommend wearing this nail. This is definitely either for art purposes, for practice, or just because you want to. So even though I say it's going to hold it without a problem, it isn't going to hold it for like a permanent situation if you were going to be wearing this nail for any, any long extended reason. But here it is, after you've done a full cure, when all of those crystals and stars are in place, you can go ahead and play with it. I think it is just so cool. I absolutely love the way that this nail turned out. And if you are interested, I will definitely put links to the different pieces I received from Ana Luisa, as well as my personal code that I can give you guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.